Welcome back to the Friday show presented by Woodbine Racetrack. Uh, earlier this week, Woodbine announced there will be no spectators allowed, uh, unfortunately, for the Queen's Plate on September 12th, but they will be doing a Queen's Plate at home um, extravaganza. It's going to be on Instagram. You can go to queensplate.com for all the details. They're going to have as much fun as they possibly can without all those people on track. So, uh, Looking forward to that and looking forward to all of us getting back on track, uh, hopefully later this year or in 2021. And Natalie, earlier this week, we published a story concerning a trainer named Wayne Potts, who uh, has now been uh, told by officials at Laurel that he must vacate the premises by next week. And it all has to do with horses trained by a name that's familiar to some Pollock Report readers, Marcus Vitale, and a training center that probably is not that familiar, named Rising Sun in New Jersey. Why don't you tell us a little bit about where this story begins? Well, um, as many of our readers may remember, uh, Marcus Vitale has had his license suspended for the past year or so um, after an incident in Delaware where um, actually the security at Delaware Park was conducting a search of a dormitory um, of one of his employees and Marcus uh, Vitali allegedly burst into the room, removed something from the room and ran away. Um, and they uh, had some concerns about what that might've been. Marcus said that it was marijuana. Um, the employee said that it wasn't. Um, and that resulted in a year long suspension in Delaware, which of course was reciprocated through other states. So until very recently, his training license has been suspended. However, we have um, noticed through Equibase that there are a number of clients, I think it's three clients um, who have been with him a long time, who've had horses that suddenly started putting workouts in at Rising Sun. Um, and those horses were entered subsequently under Wayne Potts's name. Um, some of them had also come from the barn of Monica McGoey down in Gulfstream. In fact, I contacted the New Jersey Racing Commission and asked about Rising Sun and learned that it's not a licensed training facility, but that it's workouts are recognized by Equibase, which means they go into the daily racing form. And it's a little bit strange. And I called the stewards at uh, Monmouth Park and asked about entries of a couple of horses there, and they were said they were they said that they were uh, entered by Wayne Potts, uh, and I advised them that it was my understanding that those horses may be under the supervision of Marcus Vitali at Rising Sun, and they said, well, it's so hard to prove that kind of thing. Uh, apparently, not so hard. Uh, Sal Sinatra uh, from the Maryland Jockey Club said that. He asked for the health certificates on the horses that Wayne Potts had entered that had been stable at Rising Sun. And that he said, if you held it up to the light, you could see that someone applied some whiteout to the health certificate and whited out the name of Vitali and put the name Potts on top of it. And he talked to the veterinarians that did the certificate and they said, oh yeah, those were for Marcus Vitali. So, you know, there's, a, there's an obvious problem with that. Uh, Wayne Potts is, is apparently is on a list where he can't race at several other tracks in the mid-Atlantic region. And yet this thing kind of goes on and on and on. And part of the problem, I think, are these private training uh, centers that are loosely regulated, if at all. And this part of the story then continues down in Florida, where they have far more private training centers. They're recognized as official. But the state of Florida says we have no control over these things. We, we can't even go there and see if people are operating there that have had their licenses revoked or suspended. So let's continue this story in Florida and tell us what you know. So um, interestingly, in, in Florida, obviously that Florida was a base for Jorge Navarro um, prior to his arrest on um, federal charges related to drug adulteration and misbranding earlier this year. After his arrest, there was a new racing stable that um, was registered 
with the state of Florida and also with uh, the racing regulators there called Tomahawk Racing that um, popped up and seems to exclusively have horses that used to be in Navarro's stable prior to his arrest. Several of them are horses that he ran under his own name as the owner, and a couple of them are horses that he previously trained for another owner. Um, uh, Gulfstream says that they have investigated this, that, you know, this really is a different owner, really is a training situation where the trainer on the program is actually the one doing the training. But if you look at the Florida State Business Registration for that racing stable, the two names on it are um, Navarro's father-in-law and his attorney, one of his attorneys. Right. So that raises some questions. And, uh, you know, those horses have been training at Gulfstream Park West, which used to be Calder. But if Navarro chose to, he would probably be able to get away with um, moving to one of these private, private training centers in Ocala, training off of that. And how would anybody find out? I mean, the state says they don't have the ability to go out there and check. And as far as Gulfstream's concerned, that's private property. So there is not a lot that they can do to stop somebody from, you know, engaging in activity that they don't have a, they don't have a license for, or in his case, his, his license is suspended. Yeah, this this concept of paper trainers or program trainers is something that has really been a problem in quarter horse racing, where they train on they train on on farms or private training centers, and they ship to the track and they put them in somebody's name. I mean, it's it's really a joke in quarter horse racing, and and it's a problem. It's a problem in thoroughbred racing as well. Uh, there was a, in another round of the federal indictments, there was a man named Alfredo Lichoa, a veterinarian. Uh, he was the general manager of Northwest uh, Farm, Stud or Farm in Ocala. Um, he had, he, he doesn't have that many horses that race under his name, but when I looked at all the horses that he did start this year before he was indicted, they were at seven different training centers in the Ocala area. And I just can't imagine that one trainer with only a few horses is going to spread them out over seven training centers. So what's clear to me, and it should be clear to others, is that horses are being trained by someone at these private training centers, and then they're being shipped to race uh, at Gulfstream or Tampa Bay when Tampa Bay is operating in the name of someone else who, who has not really been supervising their training. It's not like, it's not like Chad Brown or, or, somebody else that has multiple strings and trainers have assistants that are looking after them at those different training centers. This is, this is a completely different situation where there are people possibly unlicensed or possibly who've had their licenses suspended or revoked who are working at these private training centers, preparing horses and then shipping them to race under someone else's name. And that's not right. It's not, it's not fair to the other trainers who have clear licenses, um, who are trying to do things by the book, who are basing out of you know, properties that are overseen by the commission or the, the state or, or just by the racetrack ownership in, in Florida. Um, and it's, it's not fair to, to the owners who have to compete against the horses that are coming in from an environment like that. And speaking of owners, I, I tend to question in the case of anybody training off of a private training center or moving horses around showing the, having the horse show up in somebody else's name in the racing program, what can the owner be thinking? Yeah. You know, after a certain point, I could see somebody sort of believing if a trainer says to them, Oh, you know, I made this little bit of a mistake. I've been suspended. It's not really my fault. How many times do you believe somebody? And even if you continue sort of believing that the, the world is out to get them or whatever it is, the trainer may have told them, doesn't it sort of start to feel like you're doing something wrong if you have to pay one person and then see somebody else's name in the racing program? Uh, at some point, it seems like the owners should be made to answer for this. Now, we should say that you spoke with Bill Badgett at Gulfstream Park. He said they have looked into all of the transfers of horses from Jorge Navarro from the time he was indicted. He said he's looked into some of the rumored uh, paper trainers or program trainers that uh, people think are operating in South Florida and they've asked for financials, uh, they've asked for training bills and that sort of thing, and that he's satisfied that that uh, it's not occurring there. Um, I don't think a lot of places even go that far. When I did talk to the, the steward at Monmouth Park, 
they hadn't indicated to me that they looked into it. They just said it's really hard to prove. And the state racing commission didn't really seem interested in the information that we had. And so they don't really care about that either, which, which to me just emphasizes the need for, uh, some sort of federal oversight, national oversight. We don't need the federal government to, to look over this stuff, but we need one operating body to look over these things because you could be hiding out in New Jersey at a private training center and racing in Pennsylvania and the Pennsylvania Racing Commission has no jurisdiction. And I think that was the case in Maryland. So Al Sinatra said that he brings it to the stewards and they say, well, we have no jurisdiction over what happens at a private training center in New Jersey. So uh, it, it's, it's not that complicated, but the solution is out there and it's to have some sort of national oversight. Right. And, and in England, the way that it works is if you have a horse that is a racehorse that you expect to be entering at a BHA facility, then BHA officials can come, British Horse Racing Authority officials can come to where that horse is stabled. They must know where that horse is stabled at all times. And it doesn't matter if it's private property, if they feel the need to come in and check on the horse, if they need to see the trainer's uh, records as far as his veterinary records for a particular horse, they have the authority to come in and request that. Of course, I don't want to be one of those people who says, you know, oh, we have to do everything exactly like Great Britain. But, you know, they certainly have an edge over us there as far as being able to you know, jump on this kind of thing immediately and, and really find out what's going on. And I don't think it's a coincidence that we're talking about New Jersey and Florida. Those are two states where uh, Jorge Navarro and Jason Service, who was uh, indicted as well, and a lot of the other people were operating uh, in South Florida and New Jersey, both in the thoroughbred game and the, in the standard bread game. And at last week's Jockey Club roundtable, Stuart Janney indicated, the chairman of the Jockey Club, indicated that there will be more arrests coming. Right. He uh, he sort of hinted that the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic may have had a negative effect on that as far as the FBI or other law enforcement being able to figure out the safest way to arrest somebody as far as biosecurity, um, assembling grand juries, all that sort of thing has been held up by this pandemic. And um, he, he mentioned that, I assume, maybe as a hint to try to say, you know, it's, it's coming, it should have been here by now, but for this virus, you know, we're still hoping that it's, it's coming down the pike. Of course, we've been hearing, you know, something similar for quite a long time now. And none of us really knows, but um, one can only hope that if this is a wide ranging investigation, that everybody who, who has been implicated in it will in fact come to light one way or another. Yeah, it really shouldn't take the FBI to clean up horse racing, but that's sadly kind of where we are today. And, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see which, you know, how far it leads and where it leads uh, between now and uh, the next round. So that's going to do it for this edition of the Friday show presented by Woodbine Racetrack. Be sure to go to queensplate.com, learn all about the Queens Plate at home coming up on September 12th. We'll see you next time.